Howdy everybody in YouTube land. Before I can start servicing everything that's on the shelf, um, I gotta get these out of the way because these were first in line and they have been for quite some time. So this board is one of two boards sent to me by Charles. Um, you guys might know him as Matt Caps or his handle Uniserver. Um, people watching this video may have had things done by him in the past, but if it's something that he can't fix, then it comes here. Um, and I told him the same thing I told everybody else. I just don't have a whole lot of time, so don't send me anything that you don't have time for me to hold on to or if they're complete emergency cases like these two. So I know that he recaps the board. Uh, first thing I do is I like to inspect around the capacitors and I'm not saying anybody did a bad job or anything like that that's certainly not what I'm saying at all but knowing these boards you have to be very careful when you're doing the job on them so you don't you're not ripping up traces or anything like that which I think he's not gonna have that problem anyway so on close inspection there's nothing that stands out as far as the capacitor job itself so when I get these mystery boards before I power them up, um, I like to look at that. And the other thing I like to look at is on the bottom of them, um, there's a really, there's a tight trace that runs here. I make sure that solder didn't bridge off or get, uh, or that trace right here gets cut because that is the feed to the five volt regulator. This goes to the gate of that transistor, which is sitting right here. Um, that's the other thing that you have to look at too. So once I roll all that out, I like to take a look around the capacitors for rotten traces. And here's one right here, which don't look all that great. You know, it's, it's, um, let's see if I can get a, a way to point this out to you. Um, right here, you just, just, just looks kind of grungy in this area. So when I see that, I like to take a look at it. I mean, it looks like it's connected here and everything. It's all connected. But I like to take a look at this from a different perspective. Um, so and let me show you what that is. I think I've done this in a previous video. But in case you all haven't watched it, let's go ahead and do it that way. So I like to take a look at this from a different perspective. And trying to hold this at the same time holding the phone is impossible so I'll just do it this way so all right now you take a look real carefully you'll see that grungy solder joint there it's it's eaten away there's no copper there anymore. And then, same thing here. Well, next to C11, there's two there's two rings, and you can see the, the copper completely gone, right where the light's fading in and out on the left-hand side. That trace is completely disconnected from that via. And, and so that, be, that means that this trace here is disconnected from the via. As, as I see as I shown you and the same thing here. There's no copper left around here So I know without a doubt that this connection in this connection is broken so that Is a very good way to tell that you know for a fact that this board has got an issue and that was overlooked So it takes a trained eye to look for things like that, which is why I'm doing these videos is so you guys know how to look for things like that and how to troubleshoot things like that. So now I have to refer back to um, all the test points and schematics and stuff that I've drawn up over the years of working on these boards, figuring out what that is and start making patch wires. So I'm gonna go through all of those connections. I'm gonna start making patch wires and then we'll test this board afterwards and see what happens. Before I go into doing the patch wires, um, this one trace that was completely eaten away at the ring right here, um, that goes to pin, let's see, one, two, three, four, ten, pin 12. 
Pen 12 of U13C. Well, what does Pen 12 do? Well, let's take a look. Let's see. There's U13C. Pen 12. Let's see, is there a Pen 12? Yeah, yeah, there is. Um, I think it's Pen, pen 12. It's pin 12, so pin 12, right here. SCSI IRQB. Well, that seems important. So I don't think the SCSI bus is going to work without that. Um, and that's probably one of the issues is the SCSI doesn't work. Don't remember the original complaint, but the SCSI ain't going to work without that. So let's follow 12. 12 goes to... 9 and 18. 18 is a page with all the test points, so we'll ignore that. So we need to look at page 19. So here's page 10. Is it page, no, page 9, I mean. There's page 10 and then page 9. Let's see, SCSI. Let's see. SCSI. Because these, these schematics are not so fun to follow sometimes. Um, SCSI IRQB 9. So, SCSI IRQB. There it is. Well, goes directly into the SCSI IC. Actually, no. That goes into the VIA. Hmm. So, that's the buffer for the VIA. Input. Yeah, um, that's the internet request for the SCSI line coming into the main system. So, with that trace broken as fuck, um, you're not going to get the SCSI's going to be saying, hi, hello, hello, hi, 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 and the Mac is going to be going, what? So, yeah, that's, uh, that's important. Um, the other one, I haven't traced it in a circuit yet, so I will have to uh, comment on that one as soon as I find it. So I went ahead and traced out the connection because uh, remember you saw this one was broken and that one was broken. Well, that one comes out and underneath the board jumps over to here. So I metered this out and it actually goes to pin 16 of the versatile interface adapter or VIA. So let's see what that pin does. So we already know the SCSI bus is not going to work. So Let's see, pin la, 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 16, HD select. Uh, let's see, HD select, what's HD select? HD select, uh, page 11. So let's take a look at page 11. Let's see, page 11, HD select. Do that same U13C. Oh, see HD select. External head select ah head select Let's see J7 pin 16 J14 and 15 pin 12 so if I look at pin 16 of J7 that's the floppy disk drive head select so this thing's neutered guys so not only not only is the SCSI bus not gonna work well it ain't gonna boot from floppy either so because that's an important pin for selecting the um, double-sided head select for bottom or top head. It might boot a single-sided disc, a 400K, but it ain't gonna boot an 800K or a 1.4 megabyte high density. So, without the one trace, it's not gonna boot from SCSI. Without the other trace, it's not gonna boot from floppy either. So, yeah. Um, there you go. That's why this board is not functional. I, like I said, I haven't powered it up. Um, I could power it up, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to go ahead and run the tr fixes and try again. Then I'll power it up after I run the trace fixes um, and see what it does afterwards. But if all is well, I technically should have um, the, the system should boot. Uh, I, I went ahead and checked the sound caps here to their respective pins. 
and I check them from here to here to there to the speaker and to the jack in the back because they love to break too and everything there is good so I know it'll have sound um, I haven't checked the bus for the sound or anything like that and I'm not going to until I know there's a problem there but the fact that I saw these two broken one's the SCSI IRQ coming in the other one is the head select going out so there you go now that the only two visible connections that I saw that was broken are fixed let's go ahead and hook it up to the power and see what happens so I went ahead and powered it up off camera and um, no chime no anything matter of fact I'll turn it on um, you know I'll jump the pins we'll first have to power down powers up nothing press reset button it jumps up in current no sound no anything press the two power buttons power management the power management circuits working so but there's no chime there's no nothing so that's the worst case scenario so that's probably what it did originally um, I found two of the traces but apparently there's gonna be more so I did some more investigating um, this trace right here next to this via this one was broken which I patched the one next to it is broken as well so what I did was I went back um, and rubbed into it right here with my meter and it buzzed out on pin 41 over here so but it doesn't buzz out on the other side of the brake so I got to figure out what pin 41 is um, so let's figure out what pin 41 is on the via so I think via is page 9 yeah it is 41 ah shit address 10 so we know we got a broken address data bus somewhere so I can't do this on camera because my phone doesn't have a tripod but so this this guy is broken that's the trace right here so that means I got to ring it here as well as down here well this one doesn't use it so one of those chips probably the sound chip since I don't have sound let's see where's my sound circuit at um, that's, there it is since I don't have sound yep ADR 10 pin 9 so pin 9 of the sound chip contains that might be that trace I don't know we'll find out uh, pin 9 of the sound chip uh, so pin 9 of the sound chip as well as pin 40 of the swim so let's look at the sound chip first um, since I don't have sound at all uh, there's a good chance that the sound chip is dead so We'll go ahead and trace that out. <clears throat> so it is indeed broken. Address 10, pin 41, um, rings out to the bus, but address 10 to the sound chip, address 10 is broken. It's broken there. But since the swim or the sound and the swim are next to each other you know they're, they're side by side right there I went ahead and checked address 10 here too well address 10 and the sound chip address 10 are connected together but from here to here is broken so that means I have to run one more patch wire and we'll try this sucker again all right got another patch wire ran right here Go ahead and cut our soldering iron off. Hopefully everything's good. So we'll give this another shot. Let's do a reset of the power manager. Turn it on. Hey, I like that sound. Oh, hell yeah. I got a chime. Music to my ears. All right, I'll plug the floppy emulator in and make sure everything works and stuff like that. So 
this should pretty much wrap up this video I like I said I have another board over here but um, I'm not gonna do a video of it because you don't need to see the same thing over and over and over again so I just wanted to document the troubleshooting from beginning to end and uh, upload that so you all have something to watch and learn from um, so if you have any comments or questions please feel free to leave them and uh, thank you for watching